Hi, my name is Avidha Mukherjee and this is the advanced lecture series. We have completed more than three lectures now in this series. And there are a number of lectures in my channel. You can go and watch the previous lectures also. Now, we are here with the advanced lecture series because there I felt that there is a need for random discussion of the most important most trending, most advanced and recent topics in the field of English, in the field of literature, in the field of humanities and the technology. Also this advanced lecture series would come with some of the higher education and research related lectures thereafter. We would also delve, in the, delve into education. We would also talk about political science, social science and other topics. But before all these, we are here with the English language and literature. Today, we will discuss about the new literature in English. Now, the name new literature in English itself is very much suggestive and it talks about the newness of literature of the contemporary time. Now, what we will discuss in this we would first of all discuss what is new literature. Then we would talk about the literary classification. We would talk about the canonization of literature, English and colonization. We would then jump into the English in India. We will talk about the global English, English as world language. We will discuss them, English and the internet, network versus hierarchy. So these things we will discuss in today's lecture. But before that, let us understand what is new literature. New literature as the name suggests, it is something that is not traditional, it is something that is innovative, it is something that is very recent and something that you need to understand right now. New literature is a kind of literature that does not follow any kind of classical traditional literary rules. And where from we get this kind of new literature? New literature is a product of science, technology, is the product of the interference of different subjects in the field of literature. Therefore, the new word came before the literature. Now, before the new literature, there were literature uh, which we can find with some kind of uh, interdisciplinary rule breaking and new qualities. But all these set ideas were broken in the age of internet that means in the contemporary age what happened actually now you cannot classify some of the literary works you cannot give them a classification or a genre because they are very much experimental now for example i am writing the story and the story is uh, being narrated in the form of poetry, sometimes it is in the form of novel, sometimes it is following the rule of drama, that means the conversation or interaction form. So, all these forms are used. Now, what would be the genre for this writing? Very much confusing, right? So, this is the new literature. New literature does not follow any kind of rule. And the modern writers, they are not concerned about the rules. They are not aware about, or if they are aware about, they actually do not care about all these typical type of literature. So they produce very much spontaneously. They produce very much experimental writings. Therefore, we can say that new literature is the product of the age of internet. Now, 
if i write this kind of writings then these kind of writings are very much innovative right so i have given uh, the basic idea of the new literature and there is no set framework and we do not follow all these things new literature is sometimes very complex new literature is sometimes very much uh, easy to read so it can be both complex it can be simple at the same time but before that in the romantic age we find the simple poetic diction the simple writing style in the classical age we found the exaggeration of language exaggeration of terms but now in new literature there is no set rule for any kind of this type of formation you can use any kind of form literary classification is the major thing that we do not find in new literature as we have indicated one of the aims of the module that means we are what we are discussing today is to understand the categorization of literary works on the basis of extra literary and non literary consideration okay warren classify classifies the factors influencing literature as extrinsic and intrinsic but it is difficult to understand the basis of this classification if genre is intrinsic to literature and migration is an external factor influencing the writers and readers of literature can we keep the content or theme of the work separate from the form it takes right now we we'll talk about the consequence why new literature came what are the things that we need to keep in your in, in our mind when we are discussing and talking about new literature so first of all you, you remember that the great charter passed by the queen elizabeth the first in 1600 1600 and she gave the right to the merchants to the businessmen trader to trade uh, in any of the countries worldwide and the traders came to different countries including india and later on these countries after the independence uh, are called the commonwealth countries so these commonwealth countries when they became independent countries they used the english language as the weapon to fight to answer the colonizers right so we used the language we made it our own and we changed it we then started not caring about the originality of english because english is not now the language of britain it is not now the language of europe only it is the language of almost all the countries and proudly they are different because these differences in makes the language different in different countries for example as a as an indian i must be different from british so my language must be different from british and there is uh, no guilt there is no problem no issue if your english is different from your neighbor now in new literature this is a very much significant when you talk about the difference new literature always welcomes the differentiation so i as a teacher i never give extra importance to the similarities to the actual accent because i believe that a community must have their own accent right so there is no harm if your english is different from others because if you work in a, a multi ethnical multicultural uh, community or work community particularly you will find that different people are reading a text differently different teachers in one university good university and the teachers coming from different places different countries they speak in different type of english 
now this is very much common this is very much normal there is no harm so if you are finding my english different from yours then don't worry your english is correct my english is correct you are understanding my english you are understanding but you are finding that yes the pronunciations the words that the way i utter is different from the way you utter so that is completely natural that must be natural and this is the new english right so after the colonization these things happened actually i'm skipping some of the factual things here because uh, in the advanced lecture series we are here to make the concepts clear rather than going into uh, much the quotations much the citations all these things for all these i will give you my research papers so you can read from there also and the best source for all these now i am giving you one suggestion go to epg patsala right there are things you must read right sometimes we take references from there so utilize what government is giving you right indian government okay and now we would come about come to talk about the significant thing that is yes uh, that the, the thing i was uh, currently speaking the anxiety of writing and speaking correct english pervades the lives of those who wish through the language to declare themselves modern and articulate their lives and aspirations to the culture represented by the english language globally but languages are different from other tools and instruments of life they are adaptable to other languages borrowing and lending changing and assimilating according to need in order to facilitate communication right english and the internet now the development of the internet by english speaking countries have by default led to the dominance of that language on the world wide web that means the internet studies have found that over 2/3 of the users of the internet do not speak english as their first language but until 2010 technology had not developed enough to display or input non alphabetic symbols which forced the internet users to depend upon english philipson's phrase linguistic imperialism was coined to describe the situation where users of the internet were forced by circumstances to learn the language but by 2012 the percentage of english used on internet dropped to 55% from 80% in 1998 so the agenda of the hyper globalization that is the homogenization of world through globalization seems not to be working at least in the context of language use besides the rise in use of other languages on the internet the change in english itself wrought by the different uses across the world lies the fear of linguistic imperialism without resistance now the thing is that as the internet as the technologies first advanced in the european countries you know the reason because uh, they took resources from us resources from the commonwealth countries they went back they developed their technology and they sold the technology to the world even now they are much advanced right so when you have the manipulation when you have the control of technology internet you would generally as they were the colonizers they have some kind of colonizing tendency they used the english language there as the first language and there was no language preference until 2010 right you can find it here i i just gave you the data and after 
came the choices of language selection now you can choose on facebook on uh, whatsapp on insta different languages by your preference but before that there was no such kind of thing so as they managed the language initially the internet was also dominated by them but the new literature but the new technology new advancement and the globalization at the same time gave us more choices but still i have found uh, the researchers are uh, looking at the tendency of the people of having internet on english and is it wrong no it is not wrong it is completely okay because as i described now english is not now the language of the british or europeans english is our language we would use english to answer the world because 65 countries 65 different countries they colonized the common countries they understand english language so why should not we talk in english there is no harm in that right okay network and hierarchy the power of english and the struggles of those within that power to acquire it or escape its tentacles is played out in the policies towards the language in the anglo phone areas but what agp calls universal is the quote uh, that is uh, given actually here is also being inflected with changes okay what is the idea here the power of english and the network versus hierarchy okay it is saying that uh, the lines between the written and the orally transmitted are being blurred in the age of internet and cyberspace through technology people can speak in real time face to face the language of texting and emailing and access to everything including pictures and music in the real time is producing a phenomena that is neither pure speech nor pure writing the language of cyberspace may borrow the language of orality twitter or chat room but it is uh, orality mediated by writing it's neither one or not other it's both it's cyber cyberality cyber orality now uh, writing verbal language these two got mixed today uh, do you remember the online meetings do you remember the google meet do you remember the zoom meetings what happens there we speak and there are captions written automatically technology is writing that so we are communicating orally and the text is generated in the chat room the chat box is there we can write the things so now you can ask that why we are talking about the zoom meeting the google hang hang out the google meeting all these things here are they part of literature yes they are also part of literature literature is not now only about the novel novella poem drama or these things literature is not now limited in these things literature is now so ahead of all these things literature is now out of the boundary out of the reach of these common mentality so come out from all these attend these advanced lectures and you need to open your thoughts you need to come across different ideas in literature literature is now everything each and everything even a google meeting even a zoom meeting they are considered at, as important literature for the literature studies because the lectures that i am uh, giving in this series even is the literature right it is the part of discussion of literature thank you so much for watching this video and be again with another new advanced lecture by this time please subscribe my youtube channel that is avilal mukopadhyay go search there
and uh, you can also reach me on Insta, uh, Facebook and other platforms. Okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. Share with your friends. Bye-bye. Meet you in the next one.